Hello, my name is Sally Pinto, and I'm the program director for the Yonkers NORC Neighborhood Naturally Occurring Retirement Community. We serve seniors 60 plus in Northeast Yonkers. We are under the auspices of WJCS and the Yonkers Office for the Aging. We also have a resource specialist and a nurse on staff. We conduct virtual programming when partnership with the Yonkers Public Library on a daily basis. Enjoy the program. Hey everybody, so glad you could come today and join us. Uh, I was looking forward to this so much. Um, today's subject is kind of has a holiday spirit to it. It's a, a candle with a, in a lantern. And I'm going to show it to you in a moment with a wreath of evergreens underneath, which was uh, kindly uh, suggested by Z, uh, which I thought was a great idea. So we accepted it and we took it and we're going to use that as our, as our subject today. Um, it has three pieces. Uh, it's the lantern, has the candle inside, and it has the evergreens underneath. All right, let me show you what it looks like. All right, and uh, it's pretty basic. It's pretty basic. As you can see, here's the, here's the photo of it, okay? Here's the photo of the actual lantern and the evergreens underneath, okay? You can see that. Let me get you, give you a closer look. Now, obviously, we can't make it look like that with the time frame we have, but we're gonna come close. I wanna tell you exactly what we'll do, okay? The first thing we're gonna do, if you notice that there's a candle inside and it's, a, the candle is a shape of an art we call the cylinder. We're gonna create the cylinder first of the candle and then we're gonna create the structure around it, which is a big rectangle, okay? After that, you'll be see how easy it is to go with it, okay? So I hope you have a couple of sharpened pencils, all right? And uh, if you have any questions, you can always forward them just, uh, let Zeno or me know, or me know uh, exactly what you what you would like answered. Okay, so here, let's let's start, and we'll go with this. And I'll keep this up so you can see it. Okay, the first thing we're going to do is let's make um, we're going to make it a flat oval shape. It's kind of a, what's called an ellipse, and it looks like this. See that? It looks like a, a coin that's laying on a table. All right, very simple. And from there, we'll actually have, of course, the width. We'll have the width, and this is going to be okay, a small extension on on that. See how see how that goes? Very easy. Now I'm pressing very hard so you can see it, but I want you to remember that for you, this is your sketch phase. That means you're going to draw a little bit lighter than I am, so that in case you make a mistake you can erase it easily, okay? So just remember to draw a little softer. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna do two parallel lines coming down, which are gonna represent the candle. And then make a curve at the bottom to make the candle, okay? So here's what we have. See there? It could pass itself off as a rectangle also, but the cylinder works much better in art. We use it a lot. Circles and cylinders we use quite a bit in art. Very good. Okay, so now we have to establish where the lantern is. It's gonna be inside the lantern. So we have to figure out where it's gonna be positioned. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make a box. And the box is going to be a rectangle over here. Now, like so. Plus, like so, and down. That's going to be the front window. Now, Preferably, it would look better if I had a, a ruler doing it, but I'm just freehanding it. But in your kit, in your art kit with your pencils and everything, you should always have a six inch ruler in there. Try to get a six inch ruler, put it in there for little areas where you want to get be very particular about what you're drawing as far as a straight line is concerned. Okay. But 
since this is our sketch, we're not going to worry too, too much about it. Okay. So this is our front panel of our window right there. Okay. Let's take a look. You can see right there. Take a look at our sample. See, with our sample showing, you can constantly compare what we're doing. See? And what I want you to do is kind of pretend that you're home alone and that you're doing this without any professional guidance. And this is exactly how I would do it. I wouldn't change in any way. If I was going to do it for myself or a customer, this is exactly the way I would follow through. So this is what you want to do. find out what your shapes are first. Remember, we identified the cylinder. We identified the rectangle. Okay, so that's really important. Okay, now to give it a 3D look, what I'm going to do is extend a little diagonal line going backwards into the seat. Then I'm going to make what looks like a cube, not quite a cube because we haven't done the top yet. See, it looks like now the candle is inside a cube. See that? By the way, these, if you like watercolor pencils, these type of drawings are beautiful for, can, for holiday cards. Uh, you do a simple candle with a wreath at the bottom. They're lovely. They really, really are lovely. Uh, watercolor pencils are nice and they're kind of neat. You don't get too sloppy with them and stuff. Yeah. All right. Very good, very good. I don't think I'm gonna put the X's, the braces in the window, in the, in the glass here in front of the, uh, I don't, I, I kind of find that distracting. So I think I'm going to leave them without the X's in there. Okay. Very good. So let's go to the top now. Let's going to go to the roof of it. We got a little bit of a roof here. We got to hold on to, right? So let's do this. I'm going to shoot out a piece a little further out. Notice how it, notice how it sticks out. Notice how it sticks out past the edge of the side of the, of the lantern. See there? Gives it a little bit more of a clearance there. See? Yeah. Doing geometric shapes is definitely, definitely necessitates having a ruler, believe me. Yeah, but these are not too long. Uh, these long, these long shapes are not too long. That helps a little bit. And what I'm going to do is the other one right here. A little too far. See, we're putting the roof on here. Put that beautiful lantern. These are the type of lanterns sometimes you see out on a people's property on their front lawn. You know, but the staircase is going up to the houses and stuff. Really quite nice. They used to call them carriage lamps. Because they're very, very strong. Okay. Now where they meet at the top, I'm just going to come and bring a line across. And close it off. See, I close that off just like that. Now, of course, if you do your own lantern, you don't have to make it as that ornate as this. You could just make a cube with glass, maybe some decorations on the glass, and then put your candle in it and have a flat top on it with maybe a, a wire for hanging or some sort of implement that used to carry it or something like that. This is kind of nice. It's a, it's got a nice flow to it. See, just like that. Okay. And then what I'm going to do is bring it across. So. See, step by step. See, when people who who don't have experience drawing and they try to draw something, many times what happens is that they get overwhelmed. They they see. They, they look at it in, it in its totality in all of it, and they, 
they get overwhelmed that they can, can't possibly do it. But, but if you really break it down into circle, circle, square, triangle, cylinder, and see where they are and place them where you see them, you can't go wrong. Now, obviously, you'll get better as time goes on. You, you definitely do get better. But you'll be surprised if you just understand some of those basic rules, how far you can go and how quickly. Now, this one, this line is going to come down and overhang this side. Just like an eave of a roof, just like an eave of a roof on a home. See the way that hangs out there? Doesn't meet the corner and stop, it goes beyond it. See? This gives it added dimension. Now we have an actual three dimensional object. We haven't, haven't it completed yet, but we have height, we have width, and now we have depth. See? Now we have one little extra piece at the top. It's got it's just that one little piece. Don't let it don't let it worry you. We're just gonna add it. It's like a second story on a house. We're gonna extend up a couple of lines. In other words, like we're building a second floor. Can you see them? See those little lines up there? See? One on each point, each point right there. Boom, boom, end. Once those established, we join the lines together. Here we are. Everybody so far so good? I'm not going too fast, right? Everybody okay? All right, let me know. Let me know. Okay. Now, the, the top part, this is another part, the final part. We're going to add another long rectangle. Like over here. But you're going to notice, be aware of how it offsets. Okay, be aware of how it offsets. See the way it offsets? It goes off the edge there a little bit. See there? Just right off the edge. You notice that we're doing a lot of parallel lines, right? One line follows another line parallel to the other. And this is what we're going to do here. Together. We're going to bring this one back here, all the way to the back. And this is going to overhang. You had a little sandwich up there, right? And the little uh, the little hanger piece 
is uh, pretty basic. It's just a, it looks like a little, a little cylinder. Doesn't matter really what it looks like. It could be anything. The cylinder, and that's a little nub in the middle there. Compared to our sample, you see, this is important. Compared to our sample. Remember, your goal is never to try to duplicate the sample. You can't, it's hard to do that. You try to, you want to do based on your skill level to come as close as you can to what you have there, okay? But as your awareness as an artist, your visual awareness and your creativity as an artist gets larger, becomes greater you begin to see all the things you missed when you were beginning and you were learning. It just gradually, gradually adds on, okay? So don't get upset if you don't get it right away or it doesn't work out right away. It will come. It will come. All right, see? So that we have the basic structure. That's the most difficult part of the whole drawing right there, getting our structure on there. Very, very important. Okay. Now what we have to do is we have to create some reinforcement here because the glass looks kind of flimsy. There's no nothing bracing it, right? There's nothing really bracing it. You have these nice pieces of framing going around it. And also, before we do that, let's uh, let's do the bottom piece, which is also going to be it's 3D. We have to get the angle right on it, okay? And like so, make sure we get that edge softer. Right? And there we have the bottom edge inside. See there. Oh, we raise that up just a bit. Just a teeny bit. All right. There we are. We have our candle now resting right on a platform in there. Okay. And we're going to add some things to this as we go. So those two lines, one going at a 45 degree angle up, the other one pretty much horizontal to the bottom, maybe a little bit of upward angle there. Okay. All right. Excellent. Excellent. Um, let's do the back piece. And this, of course, is where this line meets this corner edge of the glass, which is covered by the candle, see? And then straight up, and there's our fourth leg of our frame right there. One, two, three, four, all right? So it makes a box or a rectangle. Try to get it right in there, okay? I've done evergreens in class before, either as wreaths or trees. Um, I tend to leave them to be the last thing I do because uh, they tend to take time to do. And if we do run out of time for the class, you always know how to finish it because we started it together and you can always you know, add to it as you do. Because uh, the evergreens, although pretty, they're very tedious. Uh, there are a lot of scribbling going on and I'll show you how to go about doing that so you don't go out of your mind, but they are quite lovely when you color them in. They're really quite lovely. Okay, let's put some bracing around this, okay? That means I'm doubling up on my line here. I'm gonna double up on my line here. I'm 
just going to make the two the two power lines in the front thicker. Okay, so that's how I did. I made them thicker. See there. These two. Practice doing 3D objects too, very important. You, you gotta know, you know where your light source is coming from, your shading, shadows, things like that. Very, very important. Now I'm just gonna add a little thickness to the one in the back because that's a little far away and uh, it's, on, it's on edge a little bit. So I'm not gonna see it as much there. And I'll do with this one too. Yeah, we're all closed in. We're all closed in. There's our, there's our lantern. There's our lantern too. I think our, I think ours look a lot more lovely than the painting. So again, if you're alone, you're drawing, and say uh, you want to draw something that you think is out of your skill level, just remember, is it a circle? Is it a, a triangle, a square, or a cylinder first? Is it a combination of those, those three or four? And see how they fit into each other and try to put them right on the paper. And then take a look at what you're copying and try to see it as you do it. It takes a lot of erasing practice, but you can do it. Down at the bottom, I'm going to add a little platform. Part, these will be partially covered by the evergreen boughs. It's going to be a little thicker. Okay, so there's my lantern. These are quite pretty. I, I love during the holidays. Um, I'm, I'm not much for big decorations, but I, I love the, the light idea, uh, the light, the brightness of the light. And, everything. and I love the, the homes that actually have the little wreaths in the windows and they have a little white candle in the middle and, and then a big wreath on the door. And that's all they have. They don't light up their trees and everything, which is fine. I, I think it reminds me of like a colonial Christmas kind of where they had very, there was no electricity and it was simple. All they have is candles, you know, and evergreen boughs. And I love, I love the idea of candles. I, I love them. Now, as I said earlier, you you can put the supporting structure of the of the actual the bracing on there, but it, it kind of takes away from your candle. It puts a big X in front of your candle, you know. This is where we as artists can be creative and then edit out what we don't want and keep what we do want. See, that's a wonderful thing. So when I see in nature, if I go out and I paint a, a nature scene, I see something I love. I don't necessarily want to paint exactly what I see, but something that's like that or to capture the light a certain way, you know? Now, for fun, you may want to put a little a flame on it. So uh, we'll put a little flame, a little little tiny flame. See, little tiny flame. Hello, Mike. Hello. How are you? I'm good. I got signed on lately, late, and then okay, the neighbor came by. But I noticed that you hold your pen pencil yes. differently than I do. So are you? When I'm when I'm painting, when I'm painting, or I'm drawing, uh, when I'm standing or uh, parallel to the canvas, I do this. If I'm if I'm doing it on the on the table, I'll do this. The reason is is that okay. when I'm drawing, sometimes I use charcoal or graphite. And I get it all over my hands, which I still did anyway, but I end up smudging a lot. And when okay. I teach in the schools also, I, 
I'm in the way of my hand uh, when the kids want to see what I'm drawing. So by doing this, I'm off to the side. And they okay. see where my pencil goes, you see? And that was the reason why I adopt that. And it, and, and it, it seems to work. It seems to work, you know? Since I work at the easel mostly, I usually use this hand position like that, yeah. That's right. Um, one other question. The bottom of my handle or on the left hand side, you're, I guess, yes. Yes. There's a line in the back, and mine doesn't quite look like yours when I try to do that. Okay. Well, it's, it's hard for me to see unless I saw exactly your, your picture to see what might be off on it. Because it could be, it could be the back line is a little lower or whatever. Uh, is that you showing me your paper? Yes. Yeah, it's very, it's it's very, very hard. Light. Oh, okay. You know what? I think... I'm sorry. It's very hard to see. I know. I I have it. Um, what you could do is um, wait I have it on a blur. Let's take that off. That might be better. Yeah. Okay. Let's see. It's uh, actually on a. I was doing it on scrap paper first. Okay, it looks Line like. Paper. Am, I, am I correct that your candle is, oh, way over to the right here? It's more over to the right. You, you might, might have pulled, put it over just a little bit to the left, but that might not be the issue. I think you're lying down here. No, you it's see, this see line right here. here. And you see, your your background line here, going into the distance, is straight across where it should be up on a diagonal matching this one. Oh, okay. See? And that gives the feeling of depth. Okay. See, that gives the so feeling. So that should be more of a diagonal going right. that way. They would be heading what's called towards a vanishing point. Okay. It's way, way in the distance. You know. It goes that eraser. <laughs> good question, though. I like those questions. They're good because sometimes it takes one line to change everything. Just one line, and it makes a big difference when you change it. Yeah. So these lines, just so you know. You, some of you might know what vanishing point is. It's where two parallel lines go into the distance and intersect finally at a point we call the vanishing point. You know, and we use it in art too. We use it all the time. Uh, one nice thing about the candle too is if you color with color pencils, uh, you can put decorations on it. You know, there's a lot of candles that have swirly, sorry, swirly lines in here and stuff. Uh, dots, uh, flowers, and stuff. You can do all kinds of things like that. But um, concentrate on your three dimensions, though. That's really a good, good thing to practice all on, because uh, the whole world is filled with three-dimensional objects, right? Now, uh, before we do anything else, and which is really not shown here in the work much, because this is kind of a generalized lighting, what I want you to do is, up in the corner here, I want you to put a little arrow, like I just did. See that little arrow pointing towards the light, the, lan the lantern? I was going to say the light out. The lantern right there. Yeah. Yes. See there? I just want. Now, what I want you to do is, I want you to keep that there because what we want to do is, we're going to take our pencil very lightly and we're going to go down the left side of our lantern, all where, where there's a hard metal object on, and shade it. So, watch what I'm going to do. I'm going to go like this. Shade this because I'm opposite the light, okay? Opposite the light. And I'm going to do it on the long vertical lines here, too. And of course, the one on the bottom. And that's what I'm going to do. And you see what I did? See how I shaded that in? That added, added already a dimension to the work. Now, the, the wreath, of, the wreath, of, the bow of evergreens are going to cover this, but I just wanted to continue the idea because, you know, since I have you for a lesson here, I don't want to miss anything, you know, and replace it with something else that is not as important. This is important, okay? This is what you're going to do, okay? If you have your light source coming from your arrow, remember that your shadows would be opposite your light. And what I, I would finally do is use my finger and smudge it to make them soft. To make them soft okay so do that your your picture becomes more powerful as soon as you do that and any artist that's a professional will look at your work and not that you're you're thinking of impressing them but they'll know that you know what you're doing see see that's the important thing
Now this might, the front might get a little bit of shadow. There might be some background shadow on that a little bit, but I'm not gonna worry about that. I wanna make sure that you understand the definite side shadow here when it's coming from another angle like that. Okay, that's really super important. Now the the evergreen leaves. Um, <laughs> I laughed as when I did. The, I've done these with so many people over the years. <laughs> I do them with a fan brush when I do oil painting, and it's a little more fun doing them with a fan brush. But um, what you have to do in this is you have to decide a section to start with. Okay, so let's start with the section on the left side of our of our lantern, okay? So I'm gonna put this over here. So I'm gonna start on the left side of our lantern. So I'm gonna go over here, okay? That's here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put an idea, very lightly, very loose, a very funny looking roundish line going around, which is gonna be the limitation of where my sprigs of evergreen will be. That's what I mean, like that. See, can you see how light I did that? See that? And the reason I do that is it gives my mind limitation because these things tend to grow very quickly and you start losing control and covering your whole page with them very quickly. <laughs> so I have that as a reminder not to go too far, not to go too far. Um, to do one of these is I kind of liken them to a palm tree, but an exaggerated palm tree, except the leaves go all the way down the trunk, right? And this, it would be a little branchlet holding these little evergreen needles right there. And the way you would do it is you would do this. Yeah, let me start you. Can you, can you see how I did that? I just fed the needles right back into the branchlet. See this? And you don't have to be super careful about it. Matter of fact, the more cavalier you are about it, the better they look. If you do it you know, kind of erratically and not so neat, they look, they look much better. And in essence, what we, what we have to do is we have to cover that whole bottom with those shapes. And it's a little, I know it's a little time consuming, but you'll know what you're doing, even if we can't completely get all of them done by seeing what you've done previously, okay? Okay, so let, I'll continue, I'll continue. And uh, the branchlets will go all the way down to the stem, all the way down, all the way down, all the way down. And uh, maybe there's another one here, and this is sticking up. And I do this. But see how they look side by side? See how they look side by side? See? Little, brand, little branches, nothing too complicated. Now, if I was to paint these, I would, I would pick different, I would pick different tones of green. Um, I would have light green, medium and dark greens and use those throughout the whole picture. You know, dark greens would be the shadow areas, you know. Again, this is a little tedious. But it's worth it. You'll definitely know how to do these once you finish. Can you do it? Is it? How's everybody doing? All right. They're a little weird, right? They're a little funny to do. You feed it right back into the branch in a dia at a diagonal. See. Hello. Hi. Hi, it's Doris, and Hi, I've Doris. got on late also because I had not mixed up with the number, but I'm trying to draw the top of the um, lantern. I'm trying to figure out, is that an angle? So I start with the angle going down first. Uh, what part are you up to, Doris? Did you do the top of the main? I didn't do any top at all. I just, just drew the lines in the candle inside. Okay. And I, I want to draw the. So where my finger is, you can see where my finger is, right? Did you do yes. this one? Uh -huh. and how about this one okay so that's going straight across yeah. to the this front one, yeah this one goes back a little ways because it has a little bit of an angle it shows okay. distance you know distance shows far away see okay so it goes back past that 
my back one a little bit. There's a little overlap. Angle. Yeah, there's a little overlap right there. It goes beyond the actual frame of the lantern. And then okay. at an angle goes right angled up right there. See? And they end, these lines end at the same level. They end at the same level. Mm. And the front line, is that an angle also? This is a straight, this is a straight no, line. No, the bottom one. Oh, uh, this, uh, this one? No, yes. this, is straight, this is straight across. And this is the one that's going into the receding into the distance. So this is going to have just a slight, not a radical angle, but a slight angle upward. Yeah. See, the, see how it complements the angle down below? Look at the bottom on the on the roof of the, uh, the bottom of the candle, the floor of the candle. Oh, yeah. the that same that kind of angle. Uh -huh. that one. And they needed a vanishing point way out there. Yeah. yeah. These are these are concepts um, that uh, believe me, you can get on uh, YouTube a lot with artists. They'll show you uh, the vanishing points and stuff like that. Very good to know to keep a good idea of what they mean and how it fits into your, especially your architectural drawing things such as this, you know, when I draw house portraits and stuff, um, <laughs> there's a lot of angles. <laughs> so I even have a protractor. <laughs> so I, I go back to math again, you know, so I hope that helped you. I hope that helped. Um, yeah, you, can always, I'm trying. <laughs> you can always, you can always write me or through Z and uh, I can help you. Uh, just let me know. And uh, if you send me your photo of your, of your picture, if you're capable of doing of sending me a photo of your picture, I'll take a look at it and show you where your angle should be. I'll I put it in Photoshop and then I'll just shoot it right back to you. And, uh, okay, so is your email on this sheet here? Yes, it's uh, should be mjteeter at gmail.com. Hmm. I just I, you would identify you know who you are, and uh, I would definitely be able to give you a little hint on how to. If there's any, and of course, express your concern to me. I don't want to correct something that you think is okay, um, because your your idea, your concept. The only thing I would insist in correcting are things that are are the standards in art. You need to know the standards properly. But the certain things that happen uh, that people suggest that are more uh, personal rather than creative standards, you know, like this. Okay, see, I'm I'm adding. See how they start adding up? See they start adding up. Yeah. See? Thank you. It's a little, you're welcome. It takes, it's a little tedious, but you know, don't worry. It happens. When I do this with a fan brush, it's so easy because I just blop down some colors and then I use my, my fan brush and I flick up and down, flick up and down, wipe off, flick up and down. And you get all these little needles that are, that are so pretty. Now, you, you'll notice uh do you notice something that you notice that you don't see you don't see the wood table underneath this in these areas because the foliage is very dense it's very dense so you don't want to see the wood table all the way up next to the bottom of the lantern it's on the outside it's on the outside and the reason is that you have a lot of clusters in there and you shouldn't be able to see. You shouldn't be able to see the wood through there. It's just on the outside edges. Yeah. It makes it look more interesting, I think. Well, this year has been definitely a year to take up a hobby like uh, drawing, I'll tell you that. Uh, or reading. You know, people have. Many people were home and uh, hopefully took up a hobby. I put them in different angles too. 
put some larger ones right in the foreground, right at the front. Right in the front there. Oh, by the way, <laughs> I made a boo-boo. I forgot to I forgot about to shade the candle. I forgot to shade the candle. I didn't realize that. My goodness, Mike, what's going on? I was in the hospital a couple of weeks, a couple of weeks, a couple of days, and I had my drawing book with me. And I was I was actually drawing the equipment. I was that's how pathetic it was. I, I was drawing the equipment in the room and the nurses and the doctors. You know, it was it was fun. That's what drawing does to me. It's really well, you'd have a lot of angles on the, the equipment, that's for sure, right? Oh yeah, exactly. You know that exactly true. And uh I, uh, <laughs> I I took time doing it too because that first night I didn't sleep at all. It was just such such a racket, you know, and it was just too many things going on. And um, so I just I frankly drew that first night, you know, on there. And uh, but the the equipment is amazing. You're absolutely right. Now some of these will overlap, of course. You know, uh, you can you can play around with that, putting you know little branchlets in there and stuff, where it starts getting very congested. Can you see? See, it starts getting very congested in there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So quiet, it's like a library. <laughs> I, I'm sorry. I, I'm just sorry. I had to throw that in there. <laughs> yeah, don't forget the other side too. Get some in the other side. That looks nice though, because it frames the lantern a little bit. You know, frames it even you can see through to the other side in the glass. See that, see that little area there right there where you can see right through the glass. You want to make sure you don't want to end it here because that looks two dimensional. You want it to wrap so it goes around the back side of it too. Okay. I think one of the most, most fun things that you'll enjoy about drawing, if you take it up and you become serious about it, your powers of observation in, increase dramatically. Um, I can't tell you when I started teaching drawing, especially. I mean, I was teaching the Bob Ross technique many years ago, and uh, we would get all kinds of people loving painting and stuff. And, and their awareness was definitely sharpened. Um, but when I started te teaching drawing and sketching, uh, people became really fine tuned to the landscape. And I'll never forget this one man that came up to me after about, must have been about the third class. I was at Friedman's, I was teaching at Friedman's. We all have bow our heads now because Friedman's just closed not long ago. Um, it's a very sad situation. Um, but uh, he came up to me after class and he said, Mike, you know what? He says, it's amazing. He says, this is the third sketching class I've taken with you. And you know what? I actually, actually are looking at things 
I see a tree now that I go, I walk down to the station every morning to go to work. He says, and I see this tree and I'm looking at details on it that I never saw before, you know? And that, as, a, as an instructor, that makes you feel so great, you know? And that's what art does for you. It just does this for you, it's natural. It makes you a better person too. Makes you a better person. I usually have my ebony pencils with me, but I have them. I'm doing a, I'm doing an art workshop studio series at the Pelham Schools, and I left all my ebony pencils there, unfortunately, which I shouldn't have done over the holiday. But they're really dark. If you get a hold of them, they're wonderful especially for these shadow areas where my pencil is here, these dark areas in here. Not, it's not quite charcoal. They're more like 6B to 8B pencils, which is a very dark graphite. And uh, they're called ebony. You should have one or two of them in your kit, especially for those dark areas. Look at this. Let me take this down. I don't think we need that anymore. Um, Color pencils is a good graduated level after this. Um, they're wonderfully used. They're pretty forgiving. As long as you don't press too hard, you can erase some of them. Um, and uh, it's a good way to start using color. Um, I wouldn't have said this many years ago, but since watercolor pencils came on the, the scene, uh, which was I, I, pretty while, a long while ago, but I started teaching before they really were a big deal. Uh, they're really the next level to go if you're going to love to, if you want to paint, quote unquote paint. Um, it's very controlled. You, you color your subject just the way you would with your color pencils, and then you take a wet brush and you go over it, and it just liquefies the paint. And um, you'll find that your mistakes are less too. And you don't lose control of the water, which is you can do when you work with the tubes of paint or in the little cakes of paint that you can slop up on your brush. You hit the paper and it's like, oh no, it's all over the place. Yeah. So it's really much, much control, more control, you know. I started using them years ago when I was starting to do my holiday cards for my family. And uh, I'll tell you right now, it was, uh, it was a joy. I loved doing them, it was, it was fun doing them. And I still do now. Because if I miss anybody, I get yelled at. Man, it keeps growing, though. This is the first year I haven't done ornaments for some of the department stores. Uh, Lord and Taylor closed. I used to do Christmas ornaments for them. Uh, of course, obviously they went under and this whole retail business is in flux right now. So I can't wait to go back to that. Hopefully next year we'll be able to do that. So you did ornaments for them to sell or you did for them to decorate their windows? They, they're given away. as uh, they, What they ask the customer to do is to, is to buy a perfume at a certain price point. Uh -huh. and they give them a boxed ornament, personalized. I write their name in it. Um, and I put a decoration of the holiday in it, like a snowman, or um, if they want something more important, I can do that. Um, um, 
I can do that. They come back to the store after and I say, well, you got to give me an hour or so. If you want to come back, you can, you can have that. And then we have, we have a, usually a nice white vinyl box for them, tissue paper, we put it in. And uh, it's quite nice. And I use, I use a liquid, I, I use a liquid, a, a liquid tech acrylic. And I, and then I coat them with a sealer so they can't be taken scraped off. So um, it, it, it worked really well. And I really miss Lord and Taylor, I'm telling you. I really miss them. Uh, I would have, uh, I would have been there at least 10 times between Thanksgiving and Christmas, but we had none this year. Um, budgets also were, uh, you know, budgets were a little funny. They, retailers don't know what direction to go in right now. So hopefully next year they'll be able to do that. And, uh, and then sometimes the retailers would approach me in August and they would ask me like Neiman Marcus, they would ask me, uh, Mike, could you do 25 or 35 ornaments with a certain theme on them, you know? And that helps me because then I can bring them with me and then only put a name on them, which helps me a lot. And then we just would give them out, you know? Sounds nice. Yeah, it was fun. It was just, it puts you in the holiday spirit too, you know? It was, it was really when I was at Saks, did it in Saks Fifth Avenue too. And, the, and of course, with Saks Fifth Avenue, we, uh, the abundance of tourists over the years was so cute. It was so funny. And where they, where they had the cosmetic counter and the perfume is right near Rockefeller, on going towards Rockefeller Center. And uh, of course, the tree was up. And so the, sometimes they would get lost by the time they hit 50 or 49th Street. And they would be looking for eyes to lock into to see, am I going in the right direction for the tree? I don't know where I'm going, you know. They could be from Japan or Germany or anything. And uh, they were so polite. They would stand in the revolving door. They would come by the, and they would look for somebody to talk to. And I knew immediately what it was. Uh, and they would walk over and in like in broken English, they would just say one word, tree. <laughs> <laughs> and I would go, all you have to do is go out here, here and then go down 20 feet. Or I forget how many meters. I should have said meters, I think. But it was so cute. The Japanese were lovely. They were, the, they were so sweet. They wouldn't want to interrupt. They didn't, for the life of them, didn't want to interrupt. They would, have, they would have stood there and not interrupted me without me interceding because I guess they felt because I was doing work that I shouldn't be bothered. But I knew exactly what they wanted and they were so sweet. And uh, they came in and they, they just said the tree. And I, I, I even got out of my chair and I walked outside and I showed them, you know where they were and it was it was just it, it was just fun i i miss it i miss it a lot you know i really do it's just a great a great time you know and uh so here i am Ta -da! You, know, you can practice these too i'll tell you what's fun is if you if you get yourself a a, a pencil kit now this is just a standard soft pencil ticonderoga to be okay get yourself uh, 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 some art art pencils uh get uh 2b to 6b and get 2h to 6h and the h's are the hard graphite they're hard they're meant for shadows and doing soft touching stuff soft soft stuff um the higher the number on the h's the harder the graphite is so you have to press very hard on a six to get the same line you would get on a 2H, okay? It goes all the way to 9H. So you can imagine <laughs> when you want those delicate, very delicate shadows, you can use a 9H. And the same goes on the other side of the dial with uh, 2B or B, the, B, the B line. 2B is a soft graphite. 9B is like almost, not quite, almost like charcoal. It's so black. It's incredible. So I usually don't go above six. I stay around about six. I don't go really low there. Um, so uh, you try to get yourself that. Uh, I put a little, just a, I, I try to get everybody into the habit of doing a horizon line. You see, just get a horizon line in there. I don't know where it is. I don't know where it is. It could be, you know, bring a, bring a string down attach it to it you know maybe it's hanging that could be the that could be where the wall and the floor meet in the distance you know 
let's I always tell everybody the same thing. If you're in a bad mood, it's okay to draw, but it's more fun when you're in a good mood. <laughs> you might get out of a bad mood if you do when you you draw when you're in a bad mood. But I like to do it when I'm in a happy mood, you know. Uh, does anybody have any questions? I used to do it when I went to church, but since we're on Zoom. <laughs> Is that right, really? <laughs> I used to draw the people in the choir. Isn't that wonderful? <laughs> I got in trouble once on the train in the subway when I was in college. I, I actually drew this man and he didn't like it at all. He was very upset. He threw he threw it in my face. He ripped it up and threw it in my face. Because I didn't get permission to draw him. He looked like a very upstanding fellow. <laughs> I didn't, you know, I wasn't sounds <laughs> like he had something to hide. <laughs> yeah. I was stunned. I was, I went, I was going to, I thought he was coming over to see what he, I was doing and then I was going to give it to him. You know, it was, it was almost done. He's going to get free here. I did a little drawing. Of it. He just, you should, you young, young, I'll never forget it. Young fellow. You should ask before you do things like that. And then he, the doors opened and he walked out and it looked like snow because he ripped the whole thing up. I don't know. People are very tense. Even more so now. Oh, yes. Yes, this is uh, so this, this way we need art in our lives. Much art. Okay. And uh, hi, everyone. This is Z from Yonkers Public Library. Thanks so much to Sally Pinto and Alexis and Barbara from Nork. Thank you to our community partners, WJCS, the City of Yonkers Office for the Aging. Westchester County Legislator Ruth Walter, Friends of Crestwood Library, and Yonkers Public Library for making this phenomenal partnership. And we thank each and every one of you for being part of our wellness community. Be well, stay well.